Hey there, Shuby Doodlers. How are you doing? Well, last week um, I drew you Ralph and Piggy from The Lord of the Flies, which I'm reading at the moment, because uh, one of my patrons, Linda Machen, asked me to <laughs> do this. And these were sketches that I did before. Click up here and you can go and see that video. And these were some sketches. And this is about where I got to last time. And there's Piggy. And now I'm starting to think about Jack, who is a very complicated character. They're, all these lads are about 11 years old. And this is a conch shell I'll be showing you how to draw later. So at the beginning, Jack is a little bit questionable, but he's kind of contained by rules of 1950s British schooling systems. And uh, I kind of know all about that. I, I wasn't, I was probably about 10 years later than these guys. Um, uh, but uh, I was brought up in a very similar kind of schooling situation, so I kind of understand what they're all about. And so these are sketches that I've done, uh, trying to think about, oh, and then uh, uh, this was the Strictly Come Dancing on Saturday night, which I had to draw, which you might call Dancing with the Stars, where you are, or whatever. It might be called wherever you live. Um, and here we are, we're back again. Um, trying to think what Jack is going to look like. And I happened to read through the book again, and this is the thing about illustration, is you really need to kind of do what's there in the story. And I'm drawing his cap, and I went back and read it, and he has a square cap, which is very odd. Back in those days in churches, the girls wore these kind of square caps if they were in the choir, but not the boys. The boys tended to have their... didn't, didn't wear hats when they were singing but i'm kind of imagining i don't know I'm, I'm i'm giving him this kind of square kind of hat now and then he starts um <laughs> turning into a savage <laughs> um, painting himself up so he paints his mask on with clay and charcoal and stuff and um i'm trying to think kind of how what he's going to look like so these are really the two faces of um jack <laughs> he's an innocent choir boy um, he's really inside. He's this psychopath, <laughs> basically. So uh, I'm going to draw them for you now. So to start off with, we want him, you know, the the innocent one. And I'm going to give him this. He's given quite a description. Um, and he has red hair. Now, this is really important <laughs> to me, particularly, because uh, I, I had quite red hair when I was a boy. And in the 50s, 60s, um, these boys would have been at private schools uh, as I was. In the 1950s, Britain had a very white, homogenous uh, population. And in the 1950s, after the war, the, the British Empire was starting to fall apart and lots of uh, people were coming from parts of the empire to the mother country, as it was called. They were coming from the Caribbean and from India, Pakistan. And so, Suddenly, in the 1950s, there were sort of sort of darker faces appearing on the streets, and I do particularly remember once seeing a Chinese person on the street and thinking Re that was really strange. And I suppose I was uh, about 10 or something at the time, about the same age as these boys, and it was so unusual to see a Chinese person on the street, and. Uh, although uh, I'm also very similar to these children, uh, I would. My dad was in the army, and so in the vacations, the holidays, uh, I would fly out to different parts of the world uh, to join my family. And um, so the, these boys have been sort of flying, um, but it, but in a potential war, <laughs> in a real war, I think, and and uh, and they crash land on a tropical island and everything goes a bit crazy after that so um so in my school i had red hair and we were all white boys and with the blonde or mousy kind of hair and i had red hair and there were a couple of other boys i can think of i yeah i think maybe maybe two other boys in the school but um, that made you stand out. And so we were, 
kind of other. And I also kind of feel there is a, a, a kind of a, a long race memory about the Vikings. And I, <laughs> I, my mother is Norwegian, which makes me a Viking, which is, makes it even worse. So, so in theory, I was a um, second generation immigrant too, I suppose. Uh, although I never really thought of it that way. And um, he's going to have feet. He's going to have toes sticking out there, I think. Um, and I'm just going to have his surplus. So they all sort of turn up in these um, black surpluses with little frilly collars, little um, mutton leg, mutton bone. Well, I can't remember what he called it, something like that. He's got a little collar on there as well. And this is kind of how we're first introduced to uh, Jack. So he has red hair and he says, it says he's really unruly. Um, and so it, it, I'm going to make his hair a little bit. Mine was really quite straight, my hair. But you get this kind of hair, which is ginger hair, which is quite curly. So I, I, that's what I'm giving him. Um, and, and they'd have all had really short hair at the time. Um, every, every boy had <laughs> short back and sides. Again, I was very unusual. Um, I hated going to the barbers and having my hair cut. And I would absolutely kick and scream and fight. And the barbers didn't want me to come anymore. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, uh this before the Beatles, I had my hair down here, and so everybody thought I was a girl, um, because boys just didn't have long hair. So, so uh, I'm going to give him slightly, slightly dangerous eyebrows, and not make the nose quite so long. The, all these proportions, if you kind of stretch the face out that way, it makes them look older. I might zoom in a bit here, actually. So I had red hair, and it was just a thing about redheads in those days. It was just a given. Redheads have hot tempers. Uh, and so, you know, a few times each term, it would be, oh, what should we do? Everybody would get bored, especially if you're a boarding school, which I was. Um, what are we going to do today? Oh, let's go and wind up Shoe. He's got a really short temper. Let's make him lose his temper. <laughs> and boy, I did. <laughs> and uh, it's... Um, it wasn't years of therapy, but years and years of trying to understand and work it out. And it was that I was... Uh, an odd one out and I had red hair and there was this thing about boys with red hair I have tempers and I've since come to realize that boys with red hair do not have tempers nor girls um, it's just all children <laughs> are born um, when they're born there's this they get to this age called the terrible twos and um, and they, they become a nightmare, basically. And they scream and they shout. And they're, they're, they're saying, hey, look, I'm a person. I want to. I don't want to do what you wanted me to do. I don't want to sit in that high chair anymore. I don't want to do that. I don't want to eat baby muck anymore. I want to be a real person. And so they're kicking and fighting and sort of making a stand for their own personality. Um, and it usually involves a lot of screaming. <laughs> you may have seen children screaming on the floor in a supermarket when you're shopping one day. <laughs> That's the terrible twos. And it drives parents mad. Um, and and it dawned on me what the problem was. And my brother used to gleefully tell me stories about how horrible I was as a child and all this. And then I, when my children were that same age, suddenly a penny dropped. Ah. When you go through that, you're either sort of, you just wait for the kids to grow out of it um, or you tell them to stop it <laughs> um, or or they just get worse and if you've got a child with red hair it's easy to say oh, well it was a redhead they got a bad temper what do you expect and when you're told that from the age of two onwards you've got 
red hair, you've got a bad temper, it, it's actually giving you an excuse to have a, red, a bad temper and to never deal with it. So the really interesting thing I worked out was that over the years, we've had a mass of immigration into this country and suddenly it, it wasn't just, it wasn't sort of okay to have red hair, be ginger. People just forgot about it and everybody, everybody's gaze turned to all these new people who look different to us. And it was like, whew, nobody's looking at me anymore. And then over the years, we had sort of race relations laws came in and one thing and another. And, and when I look back and I think, oh, goodness, you know, the, the racist jokes and stuff that would be on mainstream television when I was young. Um, and the attitudes which were perfectly acceptable. Um, and as children, you didn't know better because that's what you saw. We, you know, we weren't allowed to make racist jokes anymore. Not that we'd want to but the gaze came back again who can we have a go at now and I noticed suddenly on TV adverts they were making jokes about ginger people and ginger became a whole thing again um, and, and and because it's not a race thing it's allowed um, so <laughs> So still, so I sort of feel sorry for ginger-haired people again. Uh, although my hair went really, really dark and people don't think of me as ginger anymore. So I kind of escaped it that way as well. Here ends the lesson. To get regular drawing hints, tips and inspiration, click subscribe, ring the bell and select all notifications. Right, let's draw Jack uh, when he has his mask. We want him to sort of look similar and I'm making him a bit smaller here. So, so I'm drawing the chin like this and he's going to have a, a hairband to keep his hair out of his eyes and we've got a bit hanging down there and it's going to be kind of quite wild. Um, it's going to be, yeah, like that. And, and again, we want his eyes there, but now he's mad staring eyes so they'll be slightly bigger and we want that kind of same <laughs> mad eyebrow and we're going to have the nose and nose and a, so we might bring this mouth the chin down a bit more give get a bit more room for a ah uh. <laughs> um when you're illustrating and doing things like this it's really good to uh, <laughs> make the faces because uh, and I used to think that was a bit sort of weird of me, and then I realised that all illustrators do it really. And so now we want his shoulders right up here, and I'm going to have a hand sort of up there with the thumb, and we might have to have the spear going off the page, um, and. Then we'll have that. So this will be his shoulder and that's a, <laughs> the elbow coming down to the wrist. I'm going to have a hand there like that. So he's going to stop kind of like that. And then we're going to want his torso like that. And in the end, he's completely naked. But at this point, we'll have him with his S belt again. We had the whole thing about S belts last time. Um, like that and then his shorts so he's going to be looking pretty thin by now he's going to have his shorts on like that and and his legs will be sort of something like that and, and then his foot will be coming sort of back like that something like that so oh. <laughs> So let's have another go at this. So I'm imagining, oh, that's the wrong pen. So I'm imagining he's got some kind of sort of hair bandy kind of thing like that. And then we want to have some, a lock of hair coming over the top like that. We'll maybe put a bit of um, hatching in there. And then um, we want these, eyebrows to be pretty serious like that 
and these sort of mad eyes just slightly underneath his eyebrows and we might want to give an extra bit of kind of shadow to them because he probably doesn't get much sleep these days either I don't know <laughs> sleeping out under the stars and then we want this kind of curve at the top and then a little bump at the bottom like that and then his teeth which we'll maybe bring in like that and then we're going to want to see a tongue in there as well and a bottom lip and then an ear we're going to have bits sort of sticking out from underneath and So we'll do something like that. Oh yes, and he had freckles, lots of freckles, <laughs> which often goes with um, fair ginger skin and fair hair. And he had very blue eyes. He has as well, which is um, brings us to the pigs because pigs have <laughs> very blue eyes. So he sort of becomes a mad pig hunter. Lord of the flies is is a pig. <laughs> um, the pig's head if you haven't read the story. Oh, I hope I haven't spoiled it all for you now. Anyway, I'm imagining that you've read Lord of the Flies at some time, or maybe you're actually studying it at the moment. Um, so he's been on the island a few weeks now and his hair has gone a bit kind of crazy. And so we want to have his thumb will be something like that. No, one, two, three, four. Four, and those will be his um, fingers and we'll bring that off the page are we still <laughs> yeah are we still on the page his thumb is in front of his spear which is uh, it's been charcoal tipped it's been put in the fire to harden the end and then we're going to want to have a sort of bony shoulder and a bony elbow let's do the hand first a little bit of the thumb coming out there and then one two three and four fingers there like that and so we can bring the the forearm down like that and then it's going to be we're going to want these skinny ribs showing here now skinny ribs and maybe a belly button showing as well and then you don't want this this belt is going to be really <laughs> cinched in because uh, he hasn't they're not eating terribly well and let's get that s belt in there like that so that's sort of more obvious like that um and and we can bring these shorts down there which are all probably getting a bit <laughs> tatty <laughs> So he turns up originally. Oh, I haven't put his hat on, have I? So let's let's do that. Um, so we're going to want to put the hat in about there, and oh, I should have left room for a, for the badge. So he has a silver badge there, and it's a kind of square kind of thing like that. So there'll be this, yeah, and there's probably a bit of stitching like that. Yeah, that's better. That's what I meant to do. Um, it's very <laughs> easy when you're illustrating a book to think you've got absolutely everything and you sort of feel really pleased with yourself and you send it off to the publisher and they come back, you've forgotten to do, <laughs> forgotten the hat. <laughs> Which turns out to be a really important part of the story and you've got to sort of go back and draw a hat on everything. So let's have his knees down here. So that's a big little toes, little toes, and then we want one sort of big toe like that and into the arch that'll be the ankle so that comes into the back of the knee and then down there I'm getting rather big <laughs> feet um, and that will come back to there and then down to the ankle and then we want a big toe two three four they'll be like that so I need to dry this one too and I dry it because I'm going to erase those pencil lines. So always make sure <laughs> that the ink is dry before you erase the pencil lines because otherwise you're going to smudge the ink and then it's not going to look good, is it? And ooh, there's a bit more going on in there. I made his head a little bit 
big there, I think. So I wonder whether we can have a bit more. But anyway, so I mean, this is kind of a first draft kind of thing, is that it? If I was really illustrating this as a book, I would have pages and pages of drawings, um, practice drawings, basically, kind of really learning to know the character. And so, I mean, for a start, we're going to need to put all these freckles in there as well, which will be hidden underneath the paint, of course, which is what we're going to do now. So I get my trusty paint set, which uh, has been with me <laughs> for a very long time. Uh, just clean that pan out. I'm going to start off with um, this is Naples yellow, which all my patrons will know is my, my go to color. Um, and so he's he's just crashed <laughs> on the desert island, and he's actually the, the 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 captain. This is an interesting discussion I had from the last video that I made about school prefects. And, and and I said, do they have do they have school prefects in America? And no. <laughs> and uh, oh goodness, I think it's Clay, was it? Said that um, <laughs> they don't they don't let children be in charge in, <laughs> in America, <laughs> which is probably very very sensible. Um, but again, this this goes back to uh, all these children will have been um, all these boys rather will have been in private school. So they're prep school boys, most likely boarders, and quite a few of them, their parents were in in the military in this in this story. And I've forgotten what I was going to say now. So so we got sort of silver cross kind of thing there. Um, we're going to want a little bit of shadow in this, um, this, this little lamb cutlet kind of thing. <laughs> it's like one of those little roughs that you put on the end of a lamb cutlet or something. Well, you know, in a fancy restaurant. <laughs> I don't think they've done that since the 70s. Uh, and he's got very blue eyes. So I'm going to do this. Um, I've forgotten what on earth I was going to say. I'll tell you what, I'm going to stop the video and go back because I feel it's important. I'll just do this little bit here. I just kind of, uh, I just need a little bit of, bit more. There we go. <laughs> just wound back that last bit. Uh, school prefect, uh, and that's important in this as well because Jack is um, the leader of a gang as they. <laughs> come marching down the beach having all been um just crashed in an aeroplane in the in the in the jungle and they're all from a choir school and he's their leader so presumably he's a prefect at the school which means he already at the school has a kind of a semi semi-official um <laughs> sort of uh, what do you call it security <laughs> role <laughs> um or management role, I suppose, and um, so it, it, he's already used to organising his uh, his tribe, and they all come marching down in their surpluses, but holding their clothes. So at some point, he's made them all <laughs> change out of their everyday clothes and put on their surpluses and their hats, and. Um, and become a team so he's obviously got it in mind this this tribal thing right from the start and he loves being on this island he doesn't want to be rescued it's like you know this is like sort of permanent playtime and he can get away with murder literally so so um yeah so he's got this kind of um little hitler in him um which obviously the the school has recognised, so they've given him a certain amount of power within the school. <laughs> um, probably hoping that he'll calm down and kind of learn to, you know, be a good boy and sort of manage other people. And um, yeah, well, but you see, this whole private school system that we had at that time. Um, was really designed to feed the British Empire 
um, with management and security staff, i.e. <laughs> soldiers. And, and so the schools were all about you know, training, <laughs> training young people to go off <laughs> and um, survive on their own, basically, and control uh, these countries far, far away and their populations as well. So it, that, that, that's a whole thing that's going on in the background of this story. And Jack is um, Jack is a little Hitler and he <laughs> just wants to <laughs> beat people into submission. Uh, whereas Ralph from last week is, is a much more thoughtful boy and a much more empathic boy. And he, um, his idea of management is, is to encourage and um, and to come up with good ideas and everybody and teamwork and let's 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 do this stuff together. <laughs> and Jack is, you do what I say or else I'm going to thump you. <laughs> and in the schools of those times, that's what they had. And um, and within the army and all those kind of things, there were roles for people like that. And they probably maybe still are now. I, I don't know. I, I I think sort of modern modern armies can't really tolerate that kind of anymore. What I'm going to do is get this, which is a, a peel off China marker. You may have seen these, and it's all wrapped in paper, and you can. Mm. <laughs> it doesn't want to go that way. There we go. Um, they never really peel off easily. Let's keep going like that. Now, so this is um, wax, white wax underneath there, and I'm just going to get rid of, oh, I shouldn't get rid of that bit of string, but never mind. And I'm going to want a couple of sort of <laughs> two, three, four. I'm going to, I'm, I'm drawing two, three, four um, hand prints on here, and you can't see them, which is a bit difficult. And and I'm going to do some kind of stripey things across his arms like that. And I, I don't know how it's going to turn out, but this is going to be a resist. So when I then put paint on the top, um, the white will show through. Hopefully it's a bit of a hit and miss kind of thing. So he has a a white patch around his eye but what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it quite a little bit darker around his eye there and maybe a bit darker around his eye there that's going to be quite dark in his mouth um, and then oh I did it all in grayscale last time didn't I, I, I yeah I did it in grayscale here. I, I've completely forgotten. Um, because if, if you're doing a, a book like this, it's always going to be printed black and white. So, um, yeah. So in the old days, you would get colour plates. <laughs> in the very old days. So, uh, I think I'm going to... Yeah, I'm going to carry on with this. In, in I'm going to do this in grayscale as if it was uh, going to go into a black and white book. So I'm going to do his hair all kind of, uh, I'm just going to do a kind of an under paint of his hair, quite dark. And it's all grown and matted and and then he's got this hairband sort of holding it back as well out of his eyes. And the, 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 the hair growing, of course, at, at the time it would, <laughs> would be such a, um, such a thing because boys are just so used to having short back and sides and that was long hair was for girls <laughs> it's as simple as that <laughs> and so they yeah I think the, the long hair is mentioned a lot in the books as well um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start painting this Face. So he has a big white circle around his mm, left eye like that. And that leave a bit of shine on his nose there, and a bit of a shine on his cheek. And 
it's possibly a bit too dark but again you know so so this is a kind of a a test kind of thing and you can see the 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 white china marker coming out on here now as well um i wanted to bit, look a bit like hand prints for like in the lord of the rings film movies and then here as well we're gonna the palms of his hands are not going to be quite so dark and that's that's going to be quite that's quite dark so i'm i'm going to clean my brush and this is an aquash pentel aquash water brush <laughs> everyone always asks what's that brush um and you have the water in the barrel I fill it in through there and so it works differently to a normal brush because the water keeps flowing and so you can see as i'm going it's it's kind of thinning and you kind of have to work it and play with it to really understand it. And it was the same with every every brush you ever own, really. You have to use it a lot to understand it and to get to know it. Um, and then I think we might just sort of do that spear. Uh, actually, that should be coming through there, shouldn't it? Yeah. And these are all those little things you, you're kind of picking up as you're doing these sort of early practice sketches and you think oh I must always remember that. yeah remember that's the way the spear goes and get that right next time and and when you're doing these kind of things it doesn't matter if you're making mistakes because you just you'll get it right next time and as an illustrator you're not going to get it right first time um, it's very rarely you will and you just have to do lots and lots of different versions and, and trials and uh, so I'm cleaning the brush which means it's got clean water there and when I clean add clean water it kind of thins out what's there um, and then he's gonna have these shorts will be like that um, and we're going to want some shadow underneath here as well, which is going to be quite serious dark shadow, um, sort of 12 o'clock high <laughs> midday shadow. And again here, so we're going to put quite a dark, should be quite dark really. Uh, is that, oh, it's not actually on the camera, is it? <laughs> um, and so um so i said last week you know if you've got ideas for sort of other <laughs> things you'd like to see how i would illustrate them then do put them in the comments box last week um mr noisy asked if i could do harry potter <laughs> and, and I, i'm just very reluctant to do that because it's um it's, it's just so well known and not only you have such a strong idea of what harry potter looks like in your head um so do i um from from the way it's been illustrated and acted before and and so i i think something like harry potter if you're going to sort of come and do the whole thing from scratch um you need to have quite a bit of distance you know you should, <laughs> I, I guess it's oh what was it seven ninety seven i suppose it's 25 years now harry potter isn't it at least um and I know I was on a, a judging panel of the second book <laughs> and I'd loved the first book and um, thought, wow, this is really, really great. Um, and uh, and she actually came to my, took my children to school. They were in the lower school, so they didn't actually get to see her that time um, when the first book came out and people bought hardback first editions and got them signed because <laughs> they it was before she it kind of became really famous yeah and I really liked the first book and then I was in this judging competition I had to read tons and tons of books and the the criteria it was the Blue Peter judging prize Blue Peter book prize as uh, a tv thing here in the UK and um uh, and it was, uh, it was the beginning of it was so similar to the first one. I thought, oh no, it's just going to be the same. 
<laughs> and, and the judging criteria was the book I couldn't put down. And I put it down and I just couldn't be bothered to pick it out. And so so I didn't vote for it. <laughs> so it didn't win. Uh, it didn't win that year. But I put it down and my daughter picked it up. And that was that. She was just a Harry Potter fan. She oh, that is fantastic. <laughs> and uh, so I should have listened to her, really. This grey colour I'm using is called Neutral Tint. And I discovered this colour a long time. You could use Davies Grey as well. Now that works well. Uh, so I need a, a quite dark bit. So he has a, a, a great smear of charcoal ac across his face as well, like that. And um, so I discovered this being really good because it's not black and white. It's just a bit more subtle for painting and to get those um, different tones out of it if it's going to be printed in, in a black and white book in a half tone process. And I think, I, I don't know, maybe I'm a bit more obsessed about that kind of thing than other illustrators because <laughs> I was um, a printer when I left school and got very obsessed with trying trying to do good <laughs> good half tone images which we do, you just scan and print now but it used to be really really difficult um, to do a really good half tone print because it was all done with you know a, an enormous camera and you had to do all your f-stops and your shutter speeds and stuff <laughs> so yeah scanning is so much easier now um i'm gonna add a few little like that just to add a bit of motion to the whole thing it's probably too much <laughs> some people say i'll do too much of that um and there we go and uh, so i'm going to call that the two faces of Jack and I hope you can sort of feel that they could be the same person maybe that needs a little bit more red in there it's actually a bit more coppery kind of red like, like that and maybe oh, that's just hmm, it's probably better before so if we <laughs> put slightly browner in on the inside like that I'm not going to do any more <sighs> thanks for watching Look, click that button down there and make sure you are subscribed to the Shoe Ranger Drawing channel and keep coming back for lots more drawing videos every week. And don't forget to subscribe to Draw Stuff Real Easy as well. If you've got ideas, do put them in the comments box below. And in the meantime, keep drawing, drawing, drawing. Practice, practice, practice. And I'll see you next time. You take care now. Bye-bye.